Welcome back to the Ghost Key. I am Gray, and today we are going to host another, well actually we're going to travel away to another, uh, what is this called, Finnish League match, there we go, first, first Division League match, there we go, anyway that's what we're calling it. Anyhow, um, if the audio sounds a little weird, I have actually changed it a bit, um, I should be a little quieter, I was actually a little, um, I wasn't, I just, I wanted more sound out of um, what the hell is it called? Lotro, that's what it was. The audio on Lotro was way too low, and I didn't like that. I wanted to up that. And I understand that things may be a little different from game to game. Um, and in all truth, you really don't get much sound out of this. However, I did up the game sound just a tad little bit. And, um, lowered our, uh, microphone audio here. So, hopefully it, you get a little bit more. Pokemon actually was okay. I like that, although I could afford to turn that up a little bit, so I'm going to try doing some things this week with the new audio and all that good stuff. But anyhow, um, let's get into this right here. Um, I do have a lot to talk about, actually, and for good reason. Oh, shit. I'm still a whole week away from it. But anyway, I guess we'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll sit here and, and talk while I'm doing all this. Um... One of the things I want to mention before we get, you know, really too far into this LP, I was talking to my girlfriend earlier today, and I know this LP specifically gets absolutely no views. This is a labor of love, and this is something that I, you know, I play, as I've said before, I play Football Manager way too much. In fact, Football Manager has been the reason, actually, this whole strikerless formation has been the whole reason why I've really not played anything else. It's unfortunate. I mean, and and we've played, we've played uh, Lotro as much as we can, um, and and in truth, like I said, this game has been has been really taking me away from everything else. And if you've actually got on Lotro and tried to find us and haven't found either of us on or me on, that's the reason. It's me. It's this game, and I apologize profusely for it. I'm, I'm ever so sorry. But, um, it, like I said, it is what it is, and I apologize. This game takes up way too much of my time, and I love it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this LP. It's because this is a big part of my life, and if I'm going to do this sort of shit and play a lot of games, you know, and, and specifically stuff that I, you know, like, I mean, this is going to be one of those things that I'm going to be playing constantly, so I figured, what the hell, why not? Anyhow, um, what I meant by that is, well, the reason why I said all that, I should say, is because my girlfriend, like I said, has absolutely no interest in this shit whatsoever and doesn't even watch this this LP, which is fine because she doesn't understand what's going on. She doesn't really care for it and doesn't understand, you know, really what's going on. And that's one thing I want to talk about. I'm going to try my best to to try and help people understand what's going on and try and be as analytical as I can, especially with the formation that we're using and the ins and outs of it and what it really does and why players are doing the things that they're doing. Um, I will, Like I said, I will try my best to communicate that. I'm probably going to miss a lot of things, quite honestly. I mean, I'm not perfect, you know, but in truth, when I first started playing Football Manager back on FM11 and FM12 was the one I played a lot of, um, because 12 came out right after I started getting into Football Manager. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Ah, you know, quite honestly, I didn't really know what I was looking at. You know, I didn't know what I should be looking for, you know, as a coach would look at it. You know what I mean? Like, I was looking at it from an entertainment purpose, you know, and... And, and not real looking at it in an analytical sense. Um, it, it took a long time for me to understand what I was looking at. And I understand that, obviously, there's going to be other people like me out there that are going to really struggle trying to wrap their mind around what the hell they're watching and why this could be fun and what I'm seeing as opposed to what they're seeing. Because it's very, very different. If you're going to, you know, log on to this and, and watch this and, you know, not have any any football manager background whatsoever or be way more into it than I am which is quite a bit you know and be way more analytical and you know it's probably going to be obvious that you know people can call me out on stuff and say that I really don't know what I'm doing because it's true I mean it takes thousands and thousands of hours 
and truth to really understand this game. That's one of the things that I like about it. And that's one of the things that keeps me playing it is because the more you play it, the more is, I want to say, like, revealed to you. But, wow, this thing's really going a long time without me having to do anything. This is weird. The more you play it, the more you really, you know, the deeper it gets. And the more is kind of revealed to you, if you will. You know, the more, you know, like I said, the more complex it gets. And the more fun for me, it gets because I like that complexity. I mean, like I said, you can jump into it and not really know what the hell you're doing and do all right. But I mean, like I said, with FM14 especially, FM14 as opposed to FM12, huge, huge difference in in the way the tactics are set up. I mean, huge difference. Usually, I'm not gonna lie. Usually, I skip sports generations you know sports games every other year or so i think i will actually buy fm 15 here soon i usually wait till after january after the january transfer window because that's you know that's when they have a big ass patch for it and all that good stuff and fix some things and then that's pretty much it for the whole rest of the year so you know like i said some people jump into it right as it comes out i usually don't so therefore like i said the transition from 12 to 14 was really really rough and really really big i mean like i said there's so much more control over the tactics and the player roles and it's so much more dynamic than it was back then and of course there's more roles they've added roles you know and, and fine-tuned things that's one of the things that once again keeps me coming back to this game because even though you may think you've got it figured out you know it you may not you know what i mean it's it's and and one thing i really like about this game is when you play it you kind of have to change your tactics so it's not pretty much just line up with your tactic and just bludgeon everyone else with your superior tactics and own everyone it's you know eventually teams will catch on and they'll find ways to stop you so you've always got to find ways to kind of tweak things and and get better yourself and i appreciate that in a video game I really do. But anyway, we are finally here. Um, and all that stuff I just mentioned is stuff that we'll talk about even more as the LP goes on. Hopefully, as long as I'm doing my job, you know, providing, um, you know, decent commentary. But anyhow, um, shit, what was I going to do? Ah, I'm going to put in Hinkula. Um... And sit a rens, I think. We'll switch Heighten in here and Hinkula and have Ryson and Gronholm. And I think that's pretty much the only the only change we're gonna make. Um as you may have seen, um with with our change in formation, uh Staff Sella does not quite fit. Um normally I would say just fuck it, we'll just go and and switch him. He does have he isn't. He is rather versatile. We can probably still fit him in there if we need to, but he's going to be one of those last ditch, not really the last ditch efforts, but he's going to be one of those you know last line of defense kind of guys. You know, we'll, we'll have to throw him in there when we really really need someone to fill that. You know, everybody gets injured. We do have Robbie coming back, so that makes me a little happy, just a little bit, gives us a little bit more coverage at the back, which. Obviously, you know, something we need because our defenders aren't all that great. And in truth, um, <laughs> and in truth, that, that three goal collapse of ours in that second half has haunted me since I played this match. My god, that's literally every time I get a lead, that's all I think about is that giant three goal collapse. I know we still won the game 4 3, but still, that haunts the shit out of me. But hopefully, we won't have that happen anymore. <laughs> um uh oh uh, i should say uh like i said earlier i have been extensively testing the striker list formation and um with my galway club we uh, i used it in the champions league in our champions league group stage and we bagged 16 points out of 18 against um i wouldn't say necessarily superior supers you know really much better 
competition. In truth, I would say that they were, you know, on par with us, if not a little bit better. Not super, like, a lot better. It's not like we were slaying giants or anything like that. But I want to go back here real quick and, and show you one of the reasons why I'm excited to use this formation. And is he on under-19 squad? Yeah. We have Matias Oyala. He was on loan at HSV before we started this LP. Um, it just it was already set up and predetermined, yada, yada, yada. As you can tell, he will fit into our system, either system, perfectly. Um, and that's one of the reasons he, we, he comes back in like, I think at the end of this month, at, at the end of June here, he should come back, which is awesome, which means he may end up taking Onal out of the formation. That's my guess. Um, we're going to leave Onal in there for now and just kind of continue as things are. But... I really do think he's gonna he's gonna replace him here soon, and he's a young kid too. So therefore, we'll, we've got some some something to build on there. Um, but uh, one thing I should stress here after I get started on this, let's see uh, what should we do here. Mm. You know, I'm just gonna tell him to play loose for once. Just gonna let him. This is kind of a big match. But I don't want to put too much pressure on him. But anyway, um, one thing I strongly suggest if you plan on not only using just this formation or any formation, really, I, I strongly suggest you build on a very versatile team, grab players that are very, very versatile because it it helps a lot. Um, having formations that are relatively similar, like we do, helps. And, and formations that use some of the same players is very useful. But having players that are very versatile helps a lot too i mean it, it really opens a lot like i said you kind of have to adapt your your um your formations and your tactics pretty frequently in this game you know and and it's it's just wise to use it because you never know what may happen you know a bunch of injuries happen and you need a bunch of players to come in or in my case later you end up having a ton of kids that are are in their under 19 national teams and you they take half your roster away you know for a week or so and you got to still have to play a match you know and that's and that's where and, and like i said obviously like our our situation here we were doing all right with our 433 or whatever you want to call it and and to make this switch kind of mid-season like i said this is a very good formation to use it gets very good results but um to make this sort of switch at this point, you know, it it's helpful to have all those players that can play in different roles. So that you're really not, you know, missing much. And it allows you the opportunity to put your best players on the pitch. You know, or as many of your best players on the pitch. And look at that, just so much, so much room. So much room for our strikers to, or our attacking midfielders, I should say, to run onto. But, um... Yeah, that's probably all that I've had to say about that for now. So let's kind of get into what this formation is doing. Um, I had, I did leave the set pieces and stuff that came with this formation. I may change that because I really don't like them. I have looked at some stuff, but most of the answers that I have for, you know, making our set pieces, which are important, by the way, I'm just not very good at making them count. Um, all the information that I was able to find uh, and stuff I really read about, honestly, because I do a lot of research like that on this sort of shit. I mean, you can call it cheating if you want, but, I mean, in truth, eh, like I said, that's, wow, where's the defense? Jesus Christ. Defenders just let everyone fucking run by them there and not even bother to fucking mark anyone. That's eh, wonderful. Yeah. In truth, see, and that's, that right there, is is just our defenders not knowing where they should be and what they should be doing which in truth the defenders in this the back four in this formation shouldn't be doing anything that a defender should normally do i mean honestly it's it's a very basic formation the only areas where you should have some sort of question as to where to go what to do should be out here with the with the fullbacks the supporting fullbacks but that's it. I mean, these these back, the back three really, including the half back, really should know what to fucking do. Uh, and that just goes to show how 
not necessarily poor, but just how how our our defenders are just not not as good as they should be. Not 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 get up to grade anyway. And that's something we're gonna really have to look towards trying to fix going into the next season. Now, next season, as I've said before, I don't suspect us to have that many new players. Um, although I always say that, and then I always find a way to change, you know, three quarters of the players on my squad. <laughs> you know, when I first started a team. Um, but these guys, like I said, this just, uh, it irritates the fucking hell out of me that plays like that happen. I mean, like this. I mean, that's... You know, I think one of the big reasons, too, is we don't really have a center back, a commanding center back. That's what we're really missing. These guys aren't really that sort of, you know, tough in the air sort of center backs. I mean, we really do, like I said, have weak center backs in comparison to everything else that we have. Um, but, like I said, we, we won't be able to sign much for a while until we, um, until we turn professional. Most of the players will be able to sign our players that are already in country. Um, that's frustrating, but I understand why they did why they made that change. I mean, it makes it makes sense. You're not really going to sign a player from, you know, Africa on a part time contract for a hundred pounds a week. You know, it's just not going to work. I mean, there's just this is not enough money. So, like I said, I can understand it, but it makes starting new teams infinitely tougher. It really does, because especially lower league teams, because it's hard then to get talent. I mean, you have to pay a premium for talent that's in your country because everyone in your country is going after them. So it's very hard to get um, to get after those players. But like I said, once we turn professional, then we'll finally be able to institute our own youth program and get started in that direction. Uh, but like I said, it. Every time, every time, the damn defending, it just lets us down so much, so much. God, I can't, I, you know, now, see, now I, I want to sit here and talk about what our formation can do. Oh, that's beautiful. And I don't know how the goalkeeper got to that. But that, but anyhow, let's, let's talk about how our, our, I guess, our front three. And, and one thing you'll notice is the runs from midfield, too. Um... Once we got here, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. This is uh, just his normal central midfielder is his role, and he's attacking. So therefore, you see this. He's going to run into this space right here with, you know, that Ose opened up. That's one thing that if you're looking to make a, a very fluidic um, attacking team, the, the mentality that you're going to have to have everyone switched on to is going to be attack. That's why this formation works. I'll show you. I'll, I will get into everyone's role in this in this um, formation at the end of the season, I think, and kind of just give you you know position by position what everyone does. But that's why you're seeing this, you know, move defenders like it is number one and number two fill those gaps that those defenders are leaving. Our other formation was much more of a of a. Oh, what do you want to call it? Um, much more direct, meaning a lot more longer balls, longer passes, really dependent upon our players being much more physically gifted in creating space and individually gifted, meaning they'd have to score and do a lot of things on their own or the passes, the crosses would come from deep and, and come from from areas that, you know, really open up the opposition. Now this, like I said, now, now that Arnal has the ball, I see that defender moves up to go and cover him and close down the ball and that passes way late or not i don't know how Ose was on side there and that right there is why i like that fullback because he's there in that support position and now ooh, i don't know i was gonna have that um also one thing with the with the central attacker attacking midfielder well well they're all technically central attacking midfielders but the one that's in the middle oh no um, I recommend if you're gonna run this, um, if you're gonna run this formation, I would recommend making that player uh, 
or putting a player in that position that has a lot of technical skill, a lot of good passing skills, because right there, things like that. Um, Onal is not the best. I just have him more as that target man, you know, a, a big target man in the middle to, to go after crosses like you saw earlier. Oh, Jesus. Jeez. You guys can't figure out who should fucking pick him up. That is... The big reason is, like I said, the, the big reason why you see that is is this is a new formation. So you're seeing them not really understand who's supposed to pick who up. So that's why you're seeing things like that happen. Which, like I said, really shouldn't be happening because there really was no change in our defensive scheme other than how much we close people down. But, in truth, it, these are just basic defending instincts as far as i'm concerned i mean you, you you're a back four you're going to operate as a back four it's not like we've got a back three with a couple of wing backs pushed higher up the pitch where you've got to then you know coordinate a little bit differently it's still a back four but that's just my opinion i wish that was a little different in the game because i mean like i said that the only thing that they should have that's changed as far as how they recognize who has the ball and what they should be doing is is their uh, closing down should well actually no the, yeah they're closing down should be a bit more frequently but once again they're defenders they should know that sort of thing but yeah you know, like I said it is what it is and I'm gonna go after him and be mean and it's likely not going to do anything because once again we don't really know what we're doing um. That's just the way it is. Like I said, our defending will most likely, they'll probably score another goal or two on us. That seems to be a trend here. If, but, you know, here's the hoping, right? But anyhow, like I said, now you see, you know, that Grand Holm supports the ball here and runs it down the flank. And like I said, this is where, you know, where I like, oh, geez, what was that pass? That was a little, little, too, a little too dangerous. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody. Uh, but and one of the things that this formation, like I said, does a lot of is just it just overloads defenders and it overloads them in the center of the pitch, which then puts all your other players close together so they're not stretched out. And that was the diff. Whoa, that was the difference between our our other formation. And this one, they were much more spread out. We were playing more into space and things like that, and it depended upon our ability to pass that long ball around and over defenders and stuff like that and use our skill whereas this formation although a lot of players supposedly have to be technically gifted to pull this stuff off because of the amount of space that just being where they're at their spacing creates and that's one thing that football just boils down to it's, it's just space i mean it's, it's a game about space and spacing and where you're at i mean just look at that harala is all by himself why because of how many defend you know, how many attackers we have over there you know, it like I said, this it's it's really simple as to why this works because it puts lots of players in a small area and it forces the defenders to come close them down. And when they do close them down, there's another supporting attacker close by that is there open for a pass. Like I said, this for sort of formation, the game will tell you, and everyone online will tell you that you know, oh, you need really you know technically gifted players. You need you know. Uh, a lot of you know it's kind of like that tiki taka stuff that barcelona played and you know that's that's really what it all is because it's got that you know well not really a false nine because there's no false nine in this formation you know but that's what everyone will tell you you need blah 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 but as i've said i've achieved very good success with not very talented teams and and that's like i said all you really need is you know it it just creates so many chances that you're going to eventually break through. Um, that's, and like I said, and the reason for that is because of all the support and movement in attack. And where you get that movement is the, the attack, um, the, the attack mentality. When you change them to attack instead of support, you get all that movement. Like Heightenen up there, you know, see how he kind of stopped? I mean, that's kind of where he's going to stop unless he's got the ball because, ooh, because his job is to support the ball, not necessarily attack the goal, which is what all these other players are doing. Ugh, oh, Jesus. See? 
I mean, there's no, there was no reason for that. He just misjudged that by way too much. Way too much. The good thing is we have a two-point lead at the top of the table, and this is a second-place team. That's the only good news, re really, right now. And like, like I said, once again, I mean, it, that was a ball that should have been that should have been taken care of. I mean, there's no reason to misjudge it that bad. I mean, it really wasn't under pressure. But, you know, it is it is what it is. This team, like I said, this team is... Uh, it's frustrating the shit out of me because of our defending. Our defending has just let us down so much. Our attacking hasn't been bad. I mean, it's it hasn't been super awesome, but once again, they are learning the formation, so on and so forth. It's just our defending has been so, so poor. And, and, and I mean, I just... And like I said, those those two goals, both goals are down to the defending errors. Those aren't really, you know, errors within the formation or anything like that or the midfield letting them down. That one was just a long ball. And there's another one. Jesus, man, come on. Just close the ball down and clear it. There you go. It's not not that hard. And like I said, these this is very this is a very, very true representation of how bad these players have been. Oof. And that's something too. That's uh, you know, our, like I said, our last formation was really depending upon us making all those really. There's a very thin margin for error. Oh my God, Jesus again! Somebody, please. Our defending is just so poor. I mean, how do you how do you even justify this? I'm just taking Hinkle off because I'm just. Or fucking heightened. It doesn't even really matter who. They're just so bad. I'm just tired of looking at it. I'm going to take Hinkle off, too, and just move Hagwon back. Because uh, as uncomfortable as he is, I'm starting to feel like he's still our best fucking option. I mean, good God. It's just dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. What's, what's really messed up is this team, by... By far, does not have the worst defenders that I've ever used this formation with, and yet they perform absolutely terrible. I mean, just absolutely. Like I said, I understand it's just the first two games, but wow, just I mean, unbelievably bad. You know, which obviously leaves oh my, which obviously leaves room. You know, no room for error for your for your attacking players because they have no. No, all right. Are you, uh, you are, uh, or Michaela? No, we'll go with Ramasaho and see if he can do anything over there because Ose has been absolutely, absolutely snatching at his chances here. So, and that's something too that what they're doing is they're just playing the long ball right now and just playing long passes, and our defenders cannot seem to, you know do anything about it that is the one thing that i believe that this formation has a weakness against is the long ball um in truth if you kind of play a dump and chase kind of to use a hockey term like a dump and chase kind of tactic against us i you're gonna have relative success like i said with when your defending is this poor and your decision making at the back is just yeah it's just what it is and then yeah there, this is what's gonna happen i mean that's you know, both both goals, what's really frustrating is both goals were the subject of defenders just not doing their job and falling asleep and misjudging completely everything. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, both both shots were completely unchallenged. I mean, there's no one there closing the guy down. You know, I mean, they, they weren't even, they weren't even that good of plays on the opposition side, in truth. I mean, it's just been, ooh. And that's something too. Eventually, you'll see, you'll see this. Uh, the midfield should be closing down the ball a little bit better, and I don't mean that in, you know, much more of a different way. Just more, more cohesively. You'll see that as this formation comes along. I mean, they're, they're not going to be running everything down, but like I said, I mean that the way the midfield is supposed to work is it's supposed to kind of corner the ball in an area and kind of put a stranglehold on, on it. 
but also like I said, that only works if you can get your defenders to be competent. I mean, it's it's just it it's unbelievable. I mean, look at that. I mean, that at least is challenged. You know, that's all you need to do. Don't give them any free hatters. That's that's defending enough for me. I mean, that's it's unfortunate that it's taken us seventy minutes to see something like that. But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, um, yeah. My God, are we going to get back to action here, or are we just going to sit here and watch text roll through? I hate when it does that, by the way. It's like, I mean, do we have to sit here and, you know, wait for it to give us some yellow cards? By the way, this formation will foul a lot, and we will occur incur some some rather needless yellow cards honestly i mean it's not it's not terrible i've seen worse um and that's that's something like i said you'll you'll get used to seeing that sort of shit oh jeez now see that wasn't so bad i mean they closed down and went toward you know they do what they're supposed to do one thing i don't like ooh boy that was bad that was bad. One thing this formation does require also, I mean, it's it's pretty decent um, fullbacks, in all honesty. I mean, they don't have to be, they don't have to be offensive all-stars or anything like that. And this is a decent, can you get to it? Yes. The cutback passes are there too. Oh my, come on, why did everyone give up on that? And now see, plays like that, like Arin's coming over there. I mean, that wasn't, he didn't have to do anything much, but just get there. Ah, oh, Jesus. Get out of the way, man. Ugh. Oh, boy. Well, at least there's one good thing. We do have a decent amount of possession. <laughs> Not that it amounts to anything if you can't score, but... Uh. And once again, like I said, I left the um, I left the corners as it is for this formation, and they seem to be just... I don't even think there was anything done to them, honestly. They seem so bad. I haven't scored, ah, fuck, I don't even know if I've scored a goal with this formation yet, in truth. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what, well, let's see, that was a good, decent pass, and, oh man, come on. Two of you right there. But see, those are the things that go wrong when everything's going wrong for you, which they are today. Everything is going wrong. And now Groundhog's going to pick up a card. No, no, not this time. All right then, that's fine I suppose. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, I just this this defense, our our lack of defense has just been really irritating the shit out of me. Yeah, I know I've been saying that, and I sound like a broken record, but it is the truth. I mean, I may actually go with this formation like this with Nermela at that defensive midfielder spot next time. Um. I, I may, just because I, like I said, we gotta have someone back there to at least challenge in the air, and and Hagblom should at least do that. I mean, it's as much as I hate he does. He's not comfortable back there, but I mean, it's it's one of those things where it has to be done. I think at this point because we've just been so terrible, sown with some sort of assertiveness. That's that's the thing. I mean, there's no. There's no one with any assertive play whatsoever back there. They call it kind of just letting everybody just run through them and just standing still. But anyway, um, that does it for this episode. It's been a long one, and I apologize for that. Thanks a lot for watching. If you made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. And remember, the ghost key is the only place where pants are optional. <laughs>